Coming to you live from the JRE Tobacco Aladino Mobile Studios, it's the Cigar Pulpit. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm the Bishop of the Burn, Nick, and with me, by phone, we have a special guest from Parts of, from Parts Unknown. Eh? It, it, it's Parts uh, Very Well Unknown, as I am an unwanted guest here, but it is Jerry Pulaski here. Jerry Pulaski. Now, it's been a minute since we've heard from Jerry Pulaski. You know, since we're not doing the Ask the Pulpit, you know, on a regular basis until I get the hotline situation fixed again. Um, you know, it's 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 been a minute since we've heard from you, Jerry. How you been? Uh, I've, been I've been very good. Uh, I have been uh, slightly under the weather, as it turns out. I don't know if you could tell in my voice there. Uh, yeah. But I would like I would like to tell tell your listeners, as it turns out. Uh, it does not say anywhere in the constitution, the constitution of our Americas, as it turns out, that you can be banned from a pharmacy for drinking NyQuil that you had planned on purchasing. Oh, really? Yeah, so, like, it, you, so you were just swigging it in the aisle and whatnot before you even got to the register? Yeah, I was going to buy it, but uh, uh, Mr. Walgreen had other <laughs> ideas. <laughs> Had some problems with you just, you know, taking a shot of NyQuil right there in aisle 4A, huh? Yeah, so that's what I've been lately. But the last time I, was, I saw you, uh, Mr. Miller, yeah. there, it was, it was the play, last Pulpit Fest. It, it was. And uh, you were supposed to give me a ride home, but evidently, <laughs> you, you, evidently you forgot. Sorry, and I sorry. Was stra- I was stranded in St. Louis for quite some time. Uh, <laughs> you should have said uh, something. I didn't know. I migrated to East St. Louis, and oh, I that's a problem. I, I did join a gang for a short while. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah it, it was a rite of initiation. Uh, but uh, I eventually did get home. Yeah, no thanks to you. Okay. Well, the uh, noted, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know the the gang treated you well. I mean, I assume. I, they were I did become I, I did become their leader, as it turns out. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. My street name is J Dog. J Dog. In those parts. Okay. Well, noted. All right then. It's, it's um, a Mr. It's a Mr. J Dog to you, Mr. J Dog. So, so today I'm going to be firing up um, uh, another Aladino Candela. However, I'm going to be smoking the Robusto size this time. Um, and, uh, I'm doing that because Jerry, when you and I were talking about doing this, you wanted to talk about some St. Patrick's Day traditions. And I figured, you know, even though this episode comes out two days after St. Patrick's Day, it's still in the window. And, uh, this is also a good way for me to smoke back to back the Toro, uh, from Friday show and the, the Robusto today. So I can get that, uh, that comparison out there for the people. There you are. Yeah. Are you smoking anything? Yeah, it, it, as a serendipitous as it might be there, I was uh, uh, walking in uh, the gas station parking lot uh, this evening, and uh, a darker skinned gentleman had <laughs> asked if I, if I wanted to smoke uh, something green, as it were. Oh, my. And, and as luck would have it, I said, well, of course, I am going to give you a quarter uh uh, St. Patrick's Day podcast and my buddy, Mr. Nick Miller. So this would be ideal. So that is what I will be smoking. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure what size this is, but it looks like a petite Corona. <laughs> Did he give you any kind of tobacco makeup? Yeah, no, it, uh, it does have a cold draw of skunk. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, we will see how this <laughs> goes then. Uh, but now it's time to cut the cigar, and the official cutting is brought to you by Dan the Man Ponder over there at Riverman Cigar Company of Crestwood, Missouri. And guys, Dan the Man Ponder, I've said it once, I'll say it again, he's your Aladino home in St. Louis. He's got all the full line of Aladino cigars. You can swing on by his place. You can pick up, you know, whatever you want from the fine folks at Jerry. And uh, he may, I'm sure he probably still does. He's had a few 
um, of these uh, Aladino Candelas sitting around. So, you know, if you're interested in trying one of these, and even though it's a little post-St. Patrick's Day, he can probably get you hooked up. So, you know, if you're in the St. Louis area, swing on by, see what he's got. If you're not in the St. Louis area, well, you know what? He does do mail order, so you can give him a call. You can talk to him or Miss Cindy or Little John, and you can get them to send you a nice shipment of cigars right away. That's Riverman Cigar Company of Crestwood, Missouri. And with that, it's time to go ahead and cut the cigar. Did you have to cut yours? It did. It came pre-cut, it appear, apparently. Well, that's, but, uh, that's convenient. Yeah, that gentleman is a, I'm not sure if he was a tobacconist per se, but he did uh, pre-cut it, apparently. Oh, my God. That's that's super polite. You know? Yeah. That's the kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, service that you get at the high end lounges and things of that nature. So it's really nice. And Midwest hospitality is very cool. You know, there you go. Um, now just for, uh, purposes of full transparency here for everybody, my heater decided to shit the bed literally as Jerry and I were starting the show. So, um, I am out in the ice tent of love and, uh, I'm hoping that the little bit of heat that it was kicking off as I was setting up the equipment and everything like that is preserved long enough for me to get through the show without turning into Frosty the Snowman. But we'll see. We'll see. So. Well, well I hope you're not wearing your kilt, Mr. Miller. I am not. I did decide to go ahead and go with jeans, given the temperatures of the day. It's it's a little little cold for uh, for me to be wearing the kilt. I, I mean, I wear it all natural, you know, so it's uh, I just, it's too 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 cold. It is forward thinking, Rupert. Mm-hmm. Her mm-hmm. So, cold draw time. Get a little bit of that kind of fig newtony kind of goodness that I got on the same uh, on the on the Toro the other day. A little earthiness, a little a little fig newtoniness. It's uh, good times. Giving this a light now. And you said you had uh, skunk on the uh, cold draw there. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure of the country of origin. Uh, I want to say Tennessee, <laughs> but it uh, it is spicy. <laughs> Tennessee. <coughs> okay, then. Um, well, I have gotten mine lit and going, and so we are now going. So, so Jerry... You don't strike me. I mean, you you strike me as the kind of guy that probably celebrates St. Patrick's Day, mm-hmm. but I I can't. I, I, are you Irish? No, I uh, I am not a, uh, Irish. I am a Polish descent. I kind of assume that. But yeah, uh, the, the Polish uh, we're not known for our holidays. We basically have uh, hide the pierogi day <laughs> and uh, Bobby Vitton day. <laughs> So, okay. uh, so I have uh, just be an adopted Irishman, as it were. You have one of those, like you know how they have the May Day where they do the the girls around dance around the Maypole. Is it one of those things where like you guys have like a light bulb and you all just dance around in a circle, like you know, working that? We we all stand around the light bulb, confused as to how many of us it will take <laughs> to screw it in. Uh, I love it. I, my ex-wife is Polish, so I love making Polish jokes. Anyway, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna move on from that. So, um, don't need the lawyer calling. So, um, any, anyway, um, yeah, so we call that an ex-wife ski. Ex-wife ski. <laughs> so, um, now let's talk about your St. Patrick's Day traditions. Then, oh yes, lovely. I I find it I find it to be very convenient. Uh, the uh, local establishments around here on St. Patrick's Day, uh, the ones that are celebrating uh, the birds um, on St. Patrick's Day, will go ahead and just put a rainbow in the doorway of the burr. So you can follow that rainbow and, and, to, and to find that pot of gold, as it were. Okay. Uh, I, I will say the gold they offer is a bit saltier and creamier than the gold I would have expected, but I'm I'm guessing it is imported. Okay. I am not a gold expert, as as it were. <laughs> okay. Um uh how, how are, are how are they distributing this gold to you, Jerry? Are they are they like giving it to you in a shot glass or I mean, uh, I'm it's, assuming if it's creamy, then it's going to be some sort of a liquidy 
viscosity. It, it is usually single file in the bathroom. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, anywho. Anywho. Uh, I, I also partake in, a, I drink a fair amount of a Blackberry Guinness. Oh, you're mixing it up. Going with the Guinness this time. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I have been drinking that uh, nonstop, nonstop for about fourteen straight days here. <laughs> yeah, is it work? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so St. Patrick's Day starts on March first for you. Is kind of what you're saying. Whenever I get my Social Security check, uh, <laughs> I see. Okay, okay. And, and it came early today. There. Well, there you go. I, I have had the luck of the Irish. <laughs> All right, anyway, then. All right, then. I, I, I also uh, free uh, some steaks from the local uh, rest stop on the highway there. I uh, swat them away with my shillelagh that come through the hole in the bathroom. <laughs> okay. And I have, I'll tell you what, I have half a mind to contact the uh, um, authorities because... <laughs> That is an infestation. It is not <laughs> hospitable. They, they, uh, they, they are just ever present. So you're doing your due diligence by getting rid of the snakes in yeah. the men's room at the truck stop. Yeah, as it were. I, I also uh, driving them out, it. just driving them out of there. Yeah, and uh, as an Illinois boy yourself, there, uh, you're probably familiar with how they. Uh, paint the chicago river green i am i am indeed in fact familiar with that well i do something similar to my neighbors <laughs> um but that is mostly due to my steady diet of antibiotics <laughs> and, and acute kidney failure i see okay does it last about five days like the chicago river does or the process does. The process I, does. It, I see. It, but it, yeah, but it, it doesn't stay as long as it were. Okay. But, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I also am very familiar uh, with the Shamrock Shake. <laughs> okay. I mean, eat, there's a lot of people that do, truly do enjoy the Shamrock Shake. Yes. Uh, and I... Uh, I uh, also do the, uh, I like the, the black Irish uh, uh, invention of the McRib, as it turns out. <laughs> God. Okay. Okay. Um, is that back? I didn't know that was back. <laughs> well, it, it, it depends on the uh, area. I, I found quite a few when I was in East St. Louis, as it mm, turns out. Okay. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And that, of course, that, I, that was in late September, though. So I mean, well, I was there for quite a while. Oh, okay. <laughs> you were there. I, I, th- I thought I kept saying, well, <laughs> Nick should be here any minute, any minute." <laughs> as he said, he would. And uh, well, days turned to weeks, weeks turned to months. As it turns out, Christmas went by, and you know, yeah. just, I got gotcha. you. Okay. But uh, and then I had no means of contacting you. <laughs> Yes, you went ahead and got rid of the Easter boys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait, now wait a minute. I feel like we've had you on since that. When when did I have you on? Hang on here. I'm gonna have to check the records here because I feel like I feel like we have had you on, um, re- like since uh, maybe maybe. Um, well, son of a bitch. And, and my, my court appointed guardian, John Quimby, says you meant no ill will. It is just coincidence, and I should not contemplate legal action or suicide. You know what? No, please don't commit legal action or suicide. I, I don't want that. Um, I don't know. You know what? It has been a minute since we did your your episode um you know solo here i guess i i thought it was uh more recently than this yeah. but uh time flies as it were i guess so i didn't realize that it had been quite this long you know since we had you on here jerry um it's uh i could tell you what you know definitely an oversight uh, definitely an oversight on my part i'm sorry what was that 
Uh, no fault of my own. No, no, you, you've been around uh, apparently much closer than I realized. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, um, it was actually August 11th. So it Look was before Pulpit Fest, no less. Yeah. Yeah. It but, was probably uh, to announce my attendance. It there. probably was. Now that you put that out there, you know, man, son of a bitch. I had no idea. I feel so, so, so ignorant. And I feel bad for you, Jerry. I didn't realize that I left you stranded in East St. Louis for that long. Well, yeah, you know, you know. Mm hmm. Um, uh, but I will say, you, you you obviously are resourceful. You survived that long down there, so I'll give you credit well, for that. What happens in the streets stay in the street. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yeah. On, as for as far as uh, St. Patrick's Day traditions, I, I I guess to round it off, um, probably the most famous one I, I like to do is to find the gold. From the leprechaun. Okay. And uh, in retrospect, uh, I don't know so much if it was a leprechaun <laughs> as much as a little person. <laughs> and I'm not so sure it was gold as much as his wallet. Oh, but, uh, okay. So you just rolled a little person. A tradition nonetheless, as it were. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, you know, you, you, you got to have your traditions. They're important. Do you have any uh, traditions there, Mr. Miller? You know, Thanksgiving? I can't say as I have any solid traditions for St. Patrick's Day. I'm uh, not a fan of the corned beef and cabbage. So that's Ooh, not... Heaven, heaven, heaven's no. No. Heaven's no. That's not something that I go for. Um, you know, I, I do enjoy a nice uh, Irish car bomb. Haven't had one yet this year, though. So I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Um, I, I I also uh, do enjoy an Irish car myself. Uh, however, not the drink variety. The actual. Oh my wild. god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, um, that might get a few uh, a few people riled up. Um, your 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 listenership in Dublin has just crashed. I you know it just hit the fucking wall. Um. But, uh, you know, I mean, as everyone's aware, I did buy my kilt a couple of years back. And, um, you know, last year I, I did wear it on St. Patrick's Day. This year, as I said at the beginning of the show, it's just too damn cold out for me to wear it. Um, sad part is I think Tuesday, the day this episode comes out, I think it's supposed to be in the like mid-60s in St. Louis. So I would have totally been rocking the kilt at those kind of temperatures here. I mean, there's no... Uh expiration date on a kilt if you are to wear one Tuesday you're more than welcome you know this is some there's some truth to that because the the kilts that I the the one that I bought you know it's it it is a utility kilt it is a it is a one design for everyday wear you know and um uh it's just not one of those fashion products that um society has deemed acceptable for men or or not you know it's just one of those things that you get a lot of stares if you wear that in the united states you know and uh i feel like we should we should fight to bring that back as a more acceptable clothing option for men because by god it's fun being free and breezy on a nice you know warm summer day why do women get to wear the sundresses and be all free and breezy and pretty why can't i be free and breezy on a hot summer day and avoid you know, swamp crotch. Uh, words to live by. Words to live by. I'm just and, and why? And why, for that matter, can't you wear a sundress? I mean, I feel like that might be more socially acceptable these days than a kilt. You, you do have the gams for it, Mister Miller. You know, thank you. I appreciate that, Jerry. And the thing is, I want to know the answer to this question: Why is it socially unacceptable for me to walk up to a lady wearing a skirt? And ask her if she's wearing panties. But yet, every fucking time I wear my kilt, I have multiple people walk up to me and ask if I'm wearing underwear. Why, get, why is that okay? Is that okay? You're not a, you're not a piece of meat, is it? I'm, right? I'm not a piece of meat, damn it. 
But yet, for some reason, everybody wants to come up and ask if I'm wearing underwear. Whereas, again, if I were to walk up to any random woman wearing a skirt and just be like, hey, are you wearing panties? I would be in jail. Yeah. Yes, it would. It is very disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Uh, Almost as disrespectful as uh, getting stranded in St. Louis. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, Jerry. I'm, I'm sorry. Um. Now let let let's let's talk about that for a moment. So so you got stranded in St. Louis, following Pulpit Fest 2023, and that's my bad. That that's on me. I apologize for that. The, the wounds have healed. I hope so, because you were the first announced special guest for Pulpit Fest 2024 down in Palm Coast, Florida, at the Ash and Ale Lounge. I, I yeah I did get special exemption to attend from a Koi reporter guardian. Jack, uh, I yeah Jack would be there. I do have to spread the good word about Scientology while I'm down there. <laughs> Walk <laughs> wrong coast. You're gonna be on the yeah. wrong coast. Well, it will migrate. Okay, um, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to take some time to head over to Clearwater from uh, from uh, Palm Coast. It's probably about a three. Three, three-and-a-half-hour drive, I'd say, from Palm Coast to Clearwater. But uh, the way I look at it, if I am to get stranded here, it's much better climate. Well, no shit. I mean, that's the thing. If you're going to get stranded in Florida, you've got beaches that you can, you know, live on and seafood for days and everything else. I mean, it, it would be, it would be a nicer place to get I mean, hopefully you don't get stranded. I, I will not have to uh, start in a game. Or you could launch one. It could be the uh, Palm the, the uh, Palm Coast Boys, as it turned out. <laughs> the Palm Coast Boys, I love the, it. Yeah, uh, the Island Boys, as it were. PCB. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh fuck the Island Island Boys. <laughs> it, uh, but uh, nonetheless, I am very, I am very excited. I. Uh, I have been growing my mustache out, and I am going to get a fresh wax on it, as it turns out. Well, that'll be nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know uh, there's there's quite a few people that are that are looking at attending, and so, you know, um, we're going to have uh, some special guests from, from the actual cigar industry showing up, you know, at this thing this year. And so, um, you know, for you to be named the first special guest, celebrity guest at uh pulpit fest i mean that's it's kind of a big deal buddy yeah i, I am honored and as no coincidence uh the statue of limitations has worn off for me in the cigar industry so <laughs> there you go um now it's my understanding that you're getting your ride down to palm coast kind of cape fear style on some some greyhound buses yeah, I have not picked, picked out a vehicle yet, but that is the preferred method of transportation, as it were. Just hook yourself to the undercarriage. Yeah, it saves on gas mileage. For sure. Yeah, and I, and I look rugged doing it. I mean, I don't know how you couldn't. I mean, you just kind of, you know, I mean, not many people are willing to strap themselves to the undercarriage of a vehicle these days. Uh, you you can call me uh, Max Pulaski as a promote. <laughs> Max. Alaski. Mm-hmm. <coughs> oh my God. Um. All right. Well, I mean, is there a specific part of the uh, upcoming Pulpit Fest in Palm Coast that you're uh, most looking forward to at this point? Yeah, just mostly the uh, free merchandise and cigars you have promised for everyone, as well as the free lodging, as it turns out. Uh, now, free lodging, I don't think I ever promised to anybody. Yeah, I, the the uh, memo I got, you had a, a whole, whole uh, floor of rooms booked at the Fairfield Inn as a control. Buddy, I, I, I don't think there was any official memo ever issued, so I don't know what, I don't know what well, you're referring to. Well, I, uh, I don't know what to tell you, but uh, somebody must be uh, pulling uh, my league or your league. Okay, well... I'm willing to bet that it's Trent. I, I see. I was going to say Gator. Oh, see, now look at you. Now <laughs> you're going to trouble. Uh, because Flo- Flo- Florida is home to the Gators, mm. as you know. Okay. <laughs> well, um, 
<laughs> just can't control the Jerry Pulaski sometimes. So I'm about halfway on my Aladino <laughs> Candela here. And, uh, you know, the uh, it's like I was saying the other night when I was smoking the Toro, is that the uh, the Toro, it, it, the Toro is just a little, little lighter, a little more mellow, a little more chill. This one has a little bit more spice to it, a little bit m- more, you know, beefiness to it. And, uh, you know, I guess that would come with uh, being a Robusto versus a Toro. That, um, you know, you would have, uh, that it would be a little bit more robust, you know, as it were. So, that is typ- typically how that I, my, my, has been in my experience as, mm-hmm. as, as a will. I will say, uh, just about uh, to the final third of mine here, and I, <laughs> and I am lightheaded and hungry. <clears throat> okay. Well, and my nipples are slightly hard. I mean, only slightly, huh? Well, I think that is more a temperature uh, uh, related, as I am outside. Mm, okay. I'm not going to refer to the hardness of my my nipples at this point, but I will say it is a little, it is a little chilly. My fingertips are definitely uh, definitely cold here. Um, in the uh, appropriately named Ice Ten of Love tonight, since it's very cold and icy, so. Well, ho- ho- hopefully you don't have uh, too many more weeks of that there. Uh, spring is in the air, as yeah, it were. I would think that more than likely by the end of the month I'll be taking this down. Um, so I would hope that um, I wouldn't necessarily need it. The problem is more just at night that it gets cold at night and, uh, you know, everything. But, man, this this heater situation is bothersome. This is, uh, this is yeah, definitely yeah. troublesome. Well, it was at least it was at the start of the year. This is true. It is at the end of the year, so I'm good, you know. And and in all fairness, I do have another space heater that I could bring out here. It doesn't kick off as much heat as this does, um, but it actually looks fancier. It looks like a nice fireplace, you know. So it'll it'll really class the place up for the last couple of weeks of the season, I guess. There's always that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, uh, comfort and quality, as it were. Oh, for sure, for sure. So, what else have you been up to other than other than trolling the streets of East St. Louis and you know uh, preparing for Pulpit Fest and and I guess celebrating St. Patrick's Day? Uh, are you drinking anything over there right now? I'm kind of hearing some clanking. Yeah, I, the Black Mary Guinness still. I uh, okay. I am uh, that, and uh, the, the, as I mentioned before, the the, the Nyquil, as it turned out. Mm. The uh, I like to play this game uh, called <laughs> called uh, Beat the Clock. Beat the Clock. <laughs> yeah. You're not one of those guys that takes like you know uh, a bunch of uh, laxatives and a bunch of melatonin all at once to see like what what happens. Are you? I've seen those videos online. Uh, not in a number of years. It was uh, perhaps back in my fifties. Oh, okay. But, <laughs> Not in a good while. Not, it is your turn old. Not in a good while. That's good. That's good. Um, well, hey, why don't why don't we go ahead and move into this? It's time for the Villager Cigars Entertainment Report, brought to you by Villager. Villager Cigars, one of the leading cigar and cigarello manufacturers in the world, founded in 1888 and still family owned and operated. Head over to VilligerCigars.com and check the store locator to find a shop near you that carries them. We guarantee that Villager Cigars will be a wonderful addition to your humidor and cigar rotation. And speaking of Villager Cigars, I know that Rene Castaneda of Villager Cigars is uh, going to be at Pulpit Fest. He, uh, he, he, re- he I, I reached out with the dates and he told me that uh, those dates are free on his calendar and uh, it's only about a four-hour drive up from Miami, so... So Renee is going to be joining us at Pulpit Fest uh, 2024 at the Ash and Ale. That is reason enough to to attend there. He's a super nice guy. I, from the last Pulpit Fest, uh, he hooked us up uh, quite quite a good deal, and he wasn't even in person. So. Right. So can you only what? imagine what kind of greatness we're going to have this time when he's actually there? One can only assume. One can only assume. So Jerry. Do you watch much TV? What are you entertained by lately? Well, lately, uh, it I have wa- doesn't have to be TV. It could be whatever you want. What it just what kind of okay. what is what has entertained you? All right. Well, <laughs> uh, I, 
I guess we'll go ahead and start off the, the old fashioned route. I, uh, I, I like to, uh, peek into people's windows as they're sleeping. <laughs> okay. And then I have a pretty thriving web, uh, toilet cam series. That I, <laughs> but, but, uh, most recently, I, I would say there, I have watched, uh, Leprechaun 5 in the hood in about the three, hood. about three dozen times. Did it, did it give you some flashbacks to your time in East St. Louis? A little bit there. It, it is a cautionary tale, is it? Were you know, I I think I've even seen that one. Believe it or not, I know I've seen the first one that has Jennifer Aniston in it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm 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 I think I might have seen the one the Leprechaun in the Hood. It is a classic. Mm-hmm. It is a classic. <laughs> <coughs> Well, I had my son this weekend, so, you know, I had the trifecta of uh, Thomas the Tank Engine, Clifford, and um, uh, uh, Storybots. However, um, aside from that fun, I also uh, was able to partake in uh, a little bit more Silicon Valley. I'm digging that show uh, quite a bit. Uh, Almost done with the first season. It goes really quick. It's only like maybe eight episodes, and... um, you know, half an hour piece. So those go by really quickly. And then I found myself the other day flipping on the channels a little bit. And by God, I came across me TV. Now for me, those of you who are, you know, not familiar. Me TV is one of those, those over the air channels, but they, they play like older shows, you know, um, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, kind of kind of the older stuff, you know. And uh, by God, I came across some Mama's Family, and I was instantly amused. Hey, you can't say I'm familiar with their program. Mama's Family? Oh. It just, it just had a Reno Bill. It was great. It was a spinoff of the Carol Burnett Show, and hmm. uh, it had, uh, oh God, what was her name? I can't remember. The character's name was Thelma Harper, but for the life of me, I'm trying, I'm blanking on uh, the actress's name, um, but she played uh, played Mama, and it was her and her her little family in the house, and she was just a ball buster of an old lady, and everything. And by God, it was just an amusing amusing show. I I enjoyed watching some Mama's Family. I used to watch that shit all the time back when it was on Nick at Night. Back when Nick at Night was actually a thing, much less good, you know. The good old days, yeah, oh. for sure. Dude, that's where I watched the hell out of Get Smart was back in the day on Nick at Night. I used to love that show. Yep. So, and I, for my under, that, that is available with an antenna, I believe. Is that correct? I believe so. Yes. Um, I think there might be apps available for it as well, but but it is available over the air with an antenna. So, you know, you you, you should be able to. You know, if you can find yourself a TV there, Jerry, you should be able to get yourself some me TV. I, I do have a, a pair of rabbit ears. Uh, not so much the antenna, but an actual pair of rabbit ears. I knew that's where I, you were uh, going to go. have placed upon the TV. It does not get the best reception. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You just keep flopping over. Yeah, as it were. Yeah, yeah. I get it. That's, that's bothersome. Um... Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay well um i uh I, I just don't even know where to go um <laughs> um has anything else taken place in your world here lately jerry because i'm not gonna lie i mean we've we've do you have any other saint patrick's day you know tidbits that you feel like sharing with the people or or i, I mean I, I I can't I kind of ran the gamut. I, okay. I, I okay. Will, I, will, I will agree that uh, corned beef cabbage is absolutely disgusting. The smell not alone. A, oh yeah, no, no, not a fan. The smell alone is just downright atrocious. Mm. And you've smelled some things. Uh, yes, the streets have tails. <laughs> no. That's fair. I mean, you know, to uh, to a guy like you that's got a problem with it, that that that's fair. I mean, you know, the corned beef. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan, but I, but that I might at least eat. 
I am not a fan of the cabbage, though. Um, there, there is just certain things that do not belong together. Corned beef and cabbage is just one of them. This is not one of those I would, things I like. Yeah, no. I, w- I would also say women and the right to vote have no place oh, together. Jesus. <laughs> okay, Jerry. <laughs> You're starting to sound like Trey Mac. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will agree that we have not been on the moon. Oh, okay. Be- because, as everyone knows, the moon is made out of cheese, as any good Wisconsin boy can tell you. <laughs> oh, my. I have been seeing quite a few different, you know, just the algorithm is uh, sending me a lot of Inst- uh, Wisconsin-based Instagram reels here lately. They hurt once with the hurt once. I guess so. I guess so. It must mean you're going to pick me up and drive me to, to Florida, as a, so I will not have to go you under know, the I got a question. I do have to ask the question. So if you were trapped in East St. Louis for so long, why did you make your way back to the cold of Wisconsin? Well, yeah, much like uh, the... Uh, the prodigal son, I have returned here. Uh, it, it, my, my heart is caught there. The, the, the cheese is just not like anywhere else here. I, and that's just uh, all I know is it turns out it's just a, a familiar irity there. It's just what it comes down to. Uh, yeah, go, 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 go Packers, as it were. I mean, I get it. I just feel like you could bring Packer Nation to, you know, Key West and be happy and warm. And uh, whatnot, but I guess maybe the cheese down there is just not quite the same. It is not. It is not. You, you, do, do you not know how I'll, to make cheese? I thought that was something they just like taught all of you Wisconsin people at like age ten. Yeah, well, they do. It is a mandatory course. However, there is that little bugaboo about uh, I'm not able to leave the state <laughs> without. <laughs> permission there so, uh, that's right the court appointed you know, guardian yeah. john quimby and i tell you what he is at his wits end with me lately i tell you what yeah oh yeah between the whole uh, pharmacy incident there yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I uh oh between the and uh, i i i tell you what i i i was uh shingling a roof lately and i and I fell off of it, and uh, I became rather belligerent about, uh, I was convinced uh, that uh, I was hoodwinked, as it were, but uh, again, it, you know, goes back to the night hole. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and so he has been filling paperwork out left and right, and he says, Jerry, uh, if you do not straighten it up there, uh, Pope and Fest might not happen. Oh, shit. Well, you better you better start straightening up and flying right there, buddy. So I have been trying to keep my nose clean. Yeah, and be on the straight and narrow lately. You better. Yeah, uh, which is uh, not the easiest thing to do for old Jerry Plasky here. But uh, you know, I have uh, I have uh, you know goals in mind, as it were. Well, yeah, and, uh, I mean, you know, um, look, you got places to go and people to see. Yeah, and Scientology to spread as a word. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> oh my God, we need to get you on an episode with uh, Zenu. Yeah, we, that might be too much for your listeners. It, it might be too much for my listeners to be. To be honest, I always I, I wondered if the last time you were on the show solo like this, if it was going to be too much. But but actually, the reception was really good. So I'm kind of hoping that this one flies well as well. You know. Well, I I hope so. I I, I can't handle much more hatred. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, my my heart is big but uh, vulnerable. Oh, I get that. I totally get that. Now, speaking of flying, right? Um, you know, is it just a matter of money? Is that why you don't consider flying to Florida instead of riding on the bottom of a of a of a vehicle? I I am very uh, gravely afraid of of flying. Oh, so it's a fear of flying. Ever, ever since my days in Vietnam, ah, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I have PTVC, as it were. <laughs> okay, that, that's it. Uh, for your listeners. That is post traumatic Viet Cong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. We don't. 
we don't want that uh, being uh, being an issue. Um, you know, all your Vietnamese listeners, yeah, who may or may not be at Pulp and Fist. <clears throat> I don't know how many Vietnamese listeners I have, to be honest. I don't either. Mm -hmm. Too hmm. too many. Too many. <laughs> dear God, <laughs> dear God. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna make me put the uh, the views and opinions of the guests of the pulpit are not necessarily, you know, blah 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 on the end of this, it, aren't you? <laughs> a, discl a disclaimer, as it were. As it were. <laughs> so, are you a seafood fan? Yeah, I seafood. I eat it. I well, yeah. I mean, I get that. I mean, obviously, I'm a one on camera. People know that, but um, but I just didn't know if. Uh, if uh, since we're going down to Florida for this year's Pulpit Fest, if if you were perhaps looking forward to some uh, some some delicacies of the sea, yeah, I am a fan of crabs. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. I I did have a steady diet of crabs in the uh, late seventies, early eighties. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, if only we could have timed out Pulpit Fest with Bike Week in Daytona, you could have probably found all kinds. Yeah, they're uh, uh, back in the late seventies. Uh, old Jerry Flasky looked a lot like Billy G Billy Jean King. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> okay, all right. So, uh, so, so I got quite a, a lot of action there. If you can leave it there, I, you know, I. I can believe it. Um, you know, you're a smooth talker, Jerry. I'll give you that. Your mustache rides all a bird. Oh, dear God. <laughs> and now you're waiting in lines in men's rooms. Mm -hmm. How the mighty uh, have fallen. And I, I would like to make this announcement here. Uh, oh, boy. I, for Pulpit Fest 2024, I am offering free mustache rides to all attendees if they RSVP on that e-ticket that you had sent out. Ah, the Eventbrite, yes. No, they gotta they gotta get their ticket through Eventbrite.com. It's B-R-I-T-E, and uh, you you just go to Eventbrite.com and search for Pulpit Fest, and you can uh, submit and, and get your tickets reserved there. Uh, we you do. I am gonna require tickets for um, you know kind of the grab bag or the goodie bags and things of that nature. Um, it's just one of those things that. Uh, for headcount purposes, we need, but the tickets are complimentary, so it's not like it's costing you anything. So you know, we got that going for you. But but you're saying that people are going to have to present their ticket for the uh, free mustache rides that you're offering. Yeah, because this mustache, yeah, I mean, you have the right to, you know, it's not just for anybody there. This is this, this is <laughs> parish, parishioner only mustache rides. I mean, it's, I get that. Yeah, sure don't. Well, and my God, you're getting it, you know, done up and waxed and everything prior to, uh, to the event. So, I mean, Ex know. exactly, and it, it, it should go without saying that uh, no Viet Congs. <laughs> <laughs> no Viet Congs. Okay. Well, all right. Well, we'll have to make sure that we're watching for Charlie in the trees. Um, even, you know, even even lay ocean in Taiwanese. I got to draw the license. <laughs> oh dear God. Okay. Laotian and Taiwan, you know, I, you know, Jerry, that, that I, I don't think that's very politically correct of you these days to be to be hating on the. Uh, on I the, came from the... I, I came from a different time. Oh, that's true. I mean, I'll give you that. That's for damn sure. Um, I, I I come from the me TV era, as it turns out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you didn't know Mama's family. Yeah, that uh, that one got past the the old goal. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, well, how, how about this? Uh, guess what, motherfucker? Guess what, motherfucker? I don't have that button queued up, mm. but we can do that. So, so yeah, we we'll just go with that. Guess what, motherfucker? Uh, it's time for three cigars we smoked and enjoyed this week. So, Jerry, what 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 you what cigars have you smoked and enjoyed this week? Well, I tell you what, there uh, with the hurt uh, of St. Patrick's Day in mind, I had, had tr tried to smoke mostly uh, green cigars, as it were. As it were. Okay. Okay. And, and so I, I have smoked the uh, Rocky Patel Candela. Okay, that's a good and one. I'll just yeah, and uh, I did smoke the uh, Aladino 
uh, Robusto, like you're smoking there, uh, the Candela. Also a good uh, one. The best, as it were. Yeah. And then I did smoke a green uh, Romeo and Julieta, but I don't believe that was Candela as much as mold, as it were. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Well, that's interesting because I most of the time when it's mold on uh, on a cigar, it's white. Well, this one was green. Yeah, it's all get out. So I, I, I don't know if this would be a mold plume or just a, a dirty, dirty trick. Okay. All right. Well, um, I don't know. That's that's definitely an issue. So, um, but I, I, I am thrifty as the day is long. So I did smoke the whole thing. Well, I mean, yeah, you got you got to do it. I mean, uh, you don't want to waste it. I get yeah, that. Mom, mama's house raised no fool. <laughs> oh, God, I love it. Um, My first one is actually also, uh, I it, you said it was a Romeo and Juliet, right? Yeah. I, I had a Romeo and Juliet. I had the uh, Reserva Real Nicaragua. I picked up one of those uh, uh, at one of my stops at the, the Total Wine. And uh, got that and, and smoked that on the way home from the Total Wine. And it was delightful. Um, I do enjoy that cigar quite a bit. Um, I need to get another box of those. I haven't I haven't had a box of those in a while. And those are always really good, just kind of uh, anytime go-to cigars for me. And um, my second one is uh, one that I smoked um, while trapped at Top Shooter's on thursday and waiting for the rainstorm to pass um and uh i smoked a charter oak uh maduro robusto and yep. you know i know there are there are worse places to be trapped if there are there are um the uh the hail was definitely an issue and the rain was was rather you know driving but uh anyway i i smoked that charter oak maduro robusto and i'll tell you I don't know the last time I've smoked a Charter Oak Maduro, but it smoked wonderfully, and it was so good, and I really dug it. And uh, normally I go for the Habano on that one, but I, I did enjoy that that Maduro. And uh, and then my third one um, is one that I was able to uh, to just kind of sneak out um, last evening. Um, my son was uh, asleep. And I had a little time, and so I snuck outside and managed to get in one cigar for the day on Saturday. And I enjoyed myself a Yagua out on the uh, out on the uh, the patio there. Um, and fine, was, fine cigar that oh, one is. It was very good, and actually, I have it on very good authority that Ken uh, has procured a box of Yaguas for Pulpit Fest. Whoa. So God bless, God bless his holy name. Yep. So so uh, if you're into the Yaguas. Uh, I believe Ken at Ash and Ale has a box of those set aside and waiting for Pulpit Fest. So, so we got that taken care of. I am down to the final third of this Aladino Candela Robusto. The strength on it has picked up uh, a little bit. The 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 there's a little spice to the actual smoking experience, not a ton. It is still a very good mild uh or, or or mellow i should say mellow not mild mellow um candela you know cigar it's got um the corojo spice to it but then um it what it doesn't have and it's the same as that toro it doesn't have that kind of uh grass clipping that grassiness that you normally get from candela this is just a really good smooth cigar that um just happens to have a little bit of a a green tinge to the wrapper um you know, so I dig it. I like it. So, well, I I have finished my cigar. Yeah, and and I am halfway through a bag of Garden Salsa ch- Sun Chips. As a <laughs> You're doing a good job of not crunching in the mic. I appreciate that. Um, well, why don't I talk about my monthly cigars for a moment? It's a uh, Premium cigar subscription service where you can get a box of cigars sent to your door every month. Come in a variety of different sizes. Uh, Robusto box is $30 for four cigars. And you get the uh, El Presidente, that's eight cigars for $50. Uh, they have the MSRP guarantee. 
stating that the value of the cigars in the box is going to be greater than or at least equal to the price of the box. And um, if you use offer code PULPIT, P-U-L-P-I-T, on your, on when you order it, you get free shipping on the first box. And while you're over there, you can sign or find some fucking good coffee at MyMonthlyCigars.com and uh, try a couple different varieties. And by the way, for those folks who enjoy the Daily Press, which is the official blend of the cigar pulpit, well, I have some news. Um, unfortunately, the the Daily Press will be going away sometime soonish. I think you know maybe maybe this summer. Uh, I guess uh, there was just a an issue with the uh, with the blend at the at the at the 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 origin point, and so it's one of those things that Nick can't get it anymore, and so um, it's it's just one of those things that. So if you like the Daily Press. You're going to want to get your orders in now because uh, uh, it's going to be going away at some point here soon. But, but uh, you know, we you, you've got some time. you got some time. And also, yeah. as it pertains to fucking good coffee, make sure you go over and follow it on Twitter slash X because he is doing a coffee giveaway. And you can find out all the details over there on uh, the fucking good coffee uh, X account. Yeah, Drew Black here is more of an instant coffee uh, type of guy. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, I have could heard good things about the fucking uh, good coffee there, and it, it saddened me to hear that the Daily Press is gone. I mean, you know, me, there might be a, a tweak. We might find a new I was, blend or something. I, I was going to say that's a. I think it's a reblending time. Is I, I I think that's a fine idea, and you know, and Nick's in the the blending mood because he's got the fucking good cigar that's going to be coming out here soon, and so you're going to want to sign up and over there at mymonthlycigars.com. dot com. You can sign up to get information about the fucking good cigar. And uh, you'll be the first to know uh, pre-order details and things of that nature. So, you know, he's got all kinds of stuff going on over there right now. So, you know, it's a, it's a good time to, to visit the yeah. site. And you've had a lot more coffee since the original blend you tested. So This is true. Your, your palate has improved, so you might be actually able to offer some insight. Actual, actual insight into this one. You're right. This is true. So. I th- I think they should call the new blend uh, the Pulaski blend. Oh, really? Yeah, the, with a hint of blackberry. A hint of blackberry. I like that. Pulaski's choice. We can mm-hmm. even we can even get a picture of you standing next to a fucking donkey with a bunch of coffee beans strapped to its back. Oh, like the old like the old uh, uh, Juan Carlos. Juan or Carlos whatever. or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Juan Valdez. Juan Valdez. Juan, Juan, Valdez. Wait, Juan, Juan Valdez. Juan Valdez. Yeah, that's right. We could have uh, Jerry Valdez. You know. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, Juan, Juan Pulaski is a control. Juan Pulaski. There we go. I like that even better than. Uh, you know, Jerry Valdez. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, well, in terms of the socials, I'm available on Instagram at The Cigar Pulpit. I'm also available on Facebook where we have the Pulpit Parishioners group. I'm on Twitter slash X, YouTube. And uh, don't forget to go over to eventbrite.com and uh, search for Pulpit Fest and get your tickets all uh, reserved up for that if you're looking at going. Because, like I said, we need the head count. So, um I'm just gonna keep harping on that, and then and uh, as far as the socials, I don't own a computer. Okay, okay, but you obviously have access to a phone. Yes, uh, it it is a burner. Oh, okay. Turns out. Okay. Yeah, it, it literally means I I set it on fire when I'm in. Okay, okay. So you're not so much into the social media. Oh you know, yeah, yeah. I I rarely find a wife. I don't own a computer. And I am wanted in three states. <laughs> oh, well, then it's probably good that you don't have social media where you're posting where you're at and everything. I, I will not tell the three states. It, it, it is up to you to guess. Okay. Well, one, of them is, one of them is Wyoming, I'll say. Okay, Wyoming. Well, but I, I, I tell you what, I don't want any part of that state anyway. Okay. They can have it. They can. <laughs> They can give Wyoming back to the Indians as far as Jerry Pulaski oh is concerned. <laughs> really? What 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 specifically burned you from Wyoming? Well, that's a tale for another day. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, that's true. We are 
we are bumping up on time here. So, yeah. But, well, but uh, let's just say me and Buffalo Bill Coldy are new friends. Okay. He's a new friend of mine. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that is definitely a tale for another day. We will, we will have to serve. You know what? That's one you'll have to tell down at Pulpit Fest. I think that's, that's an idea. And on that note, I, I gotta I gotta say uh, to any of the listeners that are gonna be that live in the Florida or Georgia area, you need to mark your calendars. This is just a, gonna be a, a hell of a good time with the with the uh, celebrities in attendance and just all the good camaraderie and all the expenses Nick has graciously <laughs> agreed to pick up. Uh, I swear, everybody thinks I have a budget for this. Um... Yeah, okay. Well, I agree. It's going to be a wonderful time. Don't necessarily agree about me picking up a bunch of expenses, but but it is going to be a wonderful, wonderful time, so you're all going to want to make it. Well, I, I will I will say there, if he offers a ride home, do not count on it. <laughs> I'm flying back, so yeah, nobody nobody's getting a ride home from me this, this time. But, uh, you know, maybe you can hook a ride with Trent. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps. He might have his family, though, so I don't know if he's going to be keen on inviting a bunch of people to ride back with him. Well, what he does not, what he doesn't know will not hurt him. This is he true. Will. This is true. I, I can fit very tightly under the undercarriage of his vehicle. You know, and he just might notice his gas mileage go down just a little bit, but not much, not much. And I, I can always give a fake name. If approached. <laughs> yeah. You, you're it, kind of distinctive voice there, man. As long as we don't pass through Wyoming, I should be in the clear as it turned out. I don't think he's going to be passing through Wyoming. Well, so. well, praise Jesus. Yeah, I think you'll be fine there. So, well, Jerry, well, thank you so much for taking time out of your night, man. I do appreciate it. Well, my schedule is... Uh, Pretty much abundantly clear. I, uh, <laughs> I imagine with your heater broken, though, you should probably, uh, you probably want to get into the warm confines of your house. I, I am looking forward to getting inside, yes. You, you uh, get your electric blanket, as it were. I, so maybe, maybe a Snuggie, perhaps? That'd be nice. I do not have a Snuggie, but you're right. That would be nice. Want some ETV? Have some hot tea? You know, and... You know what they need to bring back for adults? And I don't know. Maybe they have them, and I just don't know about it. Footy pajamas. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not a fool. I mean, I used to. I, footy pajamas. There's something about being completely and totally encased in your pajamas. I think that's nice. You know? A, co a cocoon, if it were. As it were, yes. I mean, I wouldn't want to sleep in them, but to lounge around, I would totally lounge around in footy pajamas. I think you might have a trend here. You might need to start something here. You know, we could we could look at that. We could look into that. So, well, Jerry, I'm looking forward to seeing you in Florida, buddy. Yeah, me too. I, I will be on the street and narrow. And I was I, just I, about I to wait. say, keep your nose clean between now and then. Yeah, I look forward to seeing all the listeners and everybody, and just have yeah, hope it'll be a good time. There you go. Well, guys, this has been another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm Nick. Hey, uh, Drew Plisky here signing out. Everybody stay safe and stay smoky. You know, I didn't get final thoughts. So final thought, I loved my Aladino Candela Toro or uh, Robusto. It's a little bit different of a smoking experience than the Toro, but still mighty, mighty good. So final thought on your uh, cigar there, Jerry? It, it made me very sleepy and very hungry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I, I am ready for bed. All right. Well, on that note, everybody take care. <laughs>